Welcome back, everybody. My name is Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking. We are almost done with the Swift Basics Bootcamp. I hope I did not lose you guys so far. Uh, I know learning to code is hard, and I'm really hoping this playlist is helping it not be so hard. Uh, the last couple of videos, the last two videos, we looked at arrays, sets, and dictionaries. These are all collections. These are ways for us to group a bunch of pieces of data into one collection. Now, once we have this data in a collection, there's times in our code where we want to actually loop through that collection. So maybe we want to check every single item in that collection for something. So in this video, we're going to learn how to do these loops. Uh, we're going to specifically look at four loops in this video. There are other loops that I will talk about towards the end of the video, so like a while loop. But those are way less common, and we're not going to spend time on them right now. So we're going to look at four loops. We're going to look at some simple examples and some more complex examples. Uh, and then in the next video, we're going to actually take what we've learned here to the next level. So first, we're going to learn just how to manually loop on these. And then in the next video, we're going to learn a couple convenience methods on how we can do these loops without manually writing the code every time. So it's important to fundamentally understand how to loop. And there are definitely use cases in our app where we do have to manually do this. But then there are also convenience methods that, that avoid us having to manually do this every time. And so let's jump into the code and write a couple for loops. We are almost done with this playlist. So do not worry if this stuff is getting boring. I promise you the next playlist, the Swift UI Bootcamp is so much more fun because we're gonna actually build out the UI. Working with the code without the UI is very, very boring compared to building out the screens. So this is just the stuff that we need to learn to lay the groundwork so that we can do the fun stuff in the next playlist. Again, in the last two videos, we looked at arrays, we looked at sets, and we looked at dictionaries. And now that we know how to use them, we can actually look at how we can loop through the data in those collections. That's what we're going to do in this video. So let's right click the navigator, create a new file. I'm going to call this for loops. All right, let's delete this, delete this, and let's get coding. Again, we're going to use an array for most of the, again, we are going to use an array for most of this video. And that's just because arrays are the most common collection. You're going to see arrays all the time on probably every screen you ever create, there will be an array of something. All right, so what we want to do is loop on a collection of data, but let's first just loop on numbers because technically numbers are, are like a collection already. So we can loop from zero up to number 100. So the way we write that is for X in, and then we need a range here of zero dot dot less than 100. All right, so this is a for loop. It's going to say for and then so for each item, this could be item in zero through less than 100. So zero to 99. So we're going to run this closure basically 100 times. And each of those times, this item will be equal to the value that we are looping up. So if I print out here item, it's going to first start at zero and go all the way up to 99. Because the first loop, item will be zero, the second loop item will be one, the third loop item will be two. And so if I run this and look at the console, we get all these printouts here. So this is a quick loop on how we are running our code. Now I originally have wrote X because generally when we're working with numbers, we use kind of like algebra. We just use like X or I or something like that. It works the exact same way as putting an item. We can just do X and it's the exact same thing here. All right. And we can even see here on the right side that this loop, this closure executed 100 times. If I did this maybe down to 50, we can see that it executes 50 times. And that's because there's 50 items between zero and 49. If I also wanted to include the loop of 50, I could go from one to less than 51. All right, but generally in code, we're gonna go from zero to less than 50. And that's because our indexes in an array also start at zero. 
So in software, we generally like to start at zero when we can. It's not a bad thing if you want to start at one, but I think zero is probably more common. So now that we learned how to do a for loop, let's look at how we can do it with some actual data. So I'm going to create an array here. Let's say my array, and I'm going to make it equal to an array of strings. And let's do alpha, maybe beta. We can do gamma, delta, epsilon. So we got a little bit of the Greek alphabet here. And the question is, just like here, we said for the number in this collection, how do we go for the item in this collection? So we can say for item in my array and open the brackets. So this is basically the same thing as this, except here we're going to loop on the items in the array. And then every on each loop that the item that we are looping on will be the item. So alpha, beta, gamma, delta, this loop item will be alpha, beta, gamma, delta. So let's print that out to the console, print out item. I'm going to comment this out so it doesn't print anymore. If I run this, we'll see the loop happens exactly. Now, obviously we're not doing anything in this loop, so we don't really need it in our code, but there are times where we want to loop through data and then perform some sort of maybe data manipulation. So for example, maybe I have var second array of type. This will also be an array of string and let's set it equal to a blank array for now. While we are looping, maybe we want to say if item is equal to gamma, then we will call second array dot append and we will append the item that we are looping. So of course that item will be gamma. Then down here, let's print out the second array. And if I run this, we can see that the second array just includes gamma. So we basically have filtered my array into another array that just contains gamma. And all of the logic that we've been putting into functions. So like the if statements, the guard statements, we can do all that stuff inside these four loops. Let's do another example of when we might want to do something like this. So maybe I have a struct called like lessons. Maybe there's lessons in this app. So let's say maybe a lesson model. Every lesson will have a title of type string and every lesson will have a is favorite of type. All right. So then maybe in my code, I have let all lessons, which is an array of lesson model. So maybe I'll add a couple in here. Let's add in a lesson model, say lesson one is favorite true. Let's just copy and paste that a couple of times. Lesson two, lesson three, lesson four, and maybe favorite. This is not a favorite. This is not a favorite. This is a favorite. So now I could say for lesson in all lessons, and I can say if lesson dot is favorite. So if is favorite is equal to true, let's create another array here, a variable called favorite lessons, which is an array of lesson model. So if lesson is favorite, we'll call favorite lessons dot append the lesson down here. Let's print out favorite lessons. Let's run this. And now we can see that we got this final array down here that has lesson one and it has lesson four. And that's because these are the only two that are actually is favorite is equal to true. So this is just a very, very simple example of how we can loop on this data. Another really common use case when we start making screens is that we're going to loop on the data to put it on the screen. So if you think about like Instagram, when you open up the feed, there's a bunch of posts in your feed. And when you're swiping down the feed, those posts are probably in an array. And then on the screen, it probably says for post in the array of posts, put that post on the screen. So very similar logic here that we're going to just get used to as we start writing more code. Before we wrap up here, I again want to talk about the indexes of the items in this array. So as you know, arrays have indexes. So this is index zero, index one, index two, index three. And sometimes while we are doing this loop, we actually want to have access to the index. And so another way to write these functions, we could say four, and let's just put in lesson for now. And we'll say lesson in all lessons, but we're going to add in dot enumerated. 
And you'll see here that this returns us an enumerated sequence with n and x. n being the index and x being the item we are looping on. So when I do this, we now need to change lesson to that n and that x, where n is the index and x is the lesson. And so when we come into this closure now, we are looping on the same items, but now we have access to both the index and to the lesson. So now we can do something like if index is greater than two, and then we can go ahead and do something like that in our. For right now, I'm just going to print this out so we can see it. Let's put in a string here that says index, and I'll put a colon. And I'll use the backslash open and close parentheses to now put in this index into this string. And let's put in a, maybe a two bars and we'll do the lesson, a colon, and I will put in the lesson as well. Let's run this real quick. I just want to print it out. So as we're doing this loop, we can see that we're looping on index zero, and this is the lesson, index one, and then this is the lesson, and all the way down to the end of the array. So this is how we loop on arrays, and it gets really, really powerful as we start actually manipulating the data. Of course, here we're not really doing that much, but it's good to start understanding how we can actually loop on data. Final thing I'm going to leave you guys with is a little bit of control flow. So again, we're looping on the items here. And maybe we wanted to do a loop and we wanted to say, if you get to index, let's say index one, stop looping. So before we actually do this print, let's come in here and say, if index is equal to one, and let's break the loop. All right, so again, when we ran our code before, we saw all of these lessons print out, index zero, one, two, three. And we were looping on them, we are looping on them in order. So the first one is index zero, and then index one, and then two. And now we are saying, when you get to index one, break the loop. So this is the loop that we are looping through for all of the lessons. But if we break out of the loop, we stop looping. So if I run this real quick, we will notice that only index zero triggered because on the first loop, index was zero. This did not break. We printed this out. On the second loop, index was one. We broke out of the loop. So this never executed again. And we never got to index two or three because we were done with the loop. Okay. The alternative, the opposite of break is continue and continue means stop this loop, but continue to the next loop. So now we're going to continue only for index number one. And so let's run this real quick. And we can see here that index zero, two, and three printed out, but one did not because what happened was on index zero, this did not execute. And so we printed this out. On index one, it got to here and it said, hold on a second, continue to the next loop. Do not finish this loop. So this never triggered on index one because we continued to the next one before this actually executed. All right, continue and break are not very common. I do not use them or see them in apps that often but it's good for you guys to know that these are very different. They're basically opposites and you should know how they actually affect and control the flow of data in your loops. All right, that is it for this video. One thing I just want to throw out there is if we do go to Google and we type in like control flow in Swift, it's going to show us about these four loops that we just learned. It's also going to show us a little bit. So there's other things that I've not covered. So there's while loops, so it's while a condition happens, then we trigger this closure. We also have, I think we have repeat while. So continue to repeat this closure while something is true. And we have some other conditional statements. I think we actually already did most of these. We covered a switch. And let's see, we did continue, we did break. There's some other ones in here, fall through, but I would recommend, you know, reading through this on your own time, but generally like, I'm not going to actually go and make a video about while loops right now. They're important to know, 
but they're not that common in programming iOS applications. Maybe if you start making games, that might be a little more common. But for generally speaking, if you're just learning how to code, I don't think you're going to see while loops that often. You're definitely going to see for loops all the time. So I would get really comfortable with this for name in names, for item in array, because we're going to use that all of the time as we actually start building apps. I'm just going to copy and paste this URL inside this file here. Let's just say learn more and I will paste in this URL. Cool. All right, now you guys know how to loop on arrays or any kind of collection really. And in the next video, we're just gonna quickly look at maybe some fancier ways that we can do something like this. So we're gonna look at how we can actually sort and filter this data without having to manually loop through it ourselves. Thank you guys for watching. As always, my name is Nick, this is Swiffle Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.